Good afternoon, everyone. The weather is perfect and another sun-out crowd on hand at RFK Stadium in our nation's capital. The Eagles against the Redskins. And as we check the standings, you see that Washington has to win to catch Dallas. And the Redskins have to win each of the games they have remaining in order to have a chance to win the division and the home field advantage. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jack Buck with Hank Stram. And Hank, these Redskins have not played a bad game in two years. What's the story on them? The story is a very simple word, consistency, Jack. It's amazing how well they have done both offensively and defensively. But in conjunction with that same thought, not many people realize what a great job they have done with their specialty teams. Last year at this time, they had nine big plays and only two for the opposition. This year, at the same stage, they have 27 big plays and only five for the opposition, and that's really a dramatic difference. And as a result of that, Joe Gibbs and these Redskins have a chance to repeat in the Super Bowl if things go well. And that's another great achievement and a great accomplishment and a terrific compliment to Joe Gibbs and his coaching staffs. Only nine coaches, nine people in the whole world really know how tough it is, and those are the people who won Super Bowls in the past to come back after winning it and do as well as they've done this year so far, and he still has to win, has a chance to win it again this year. We saw the Eagles last week, and they were terrible, and their coach, Marion Campbell, said we are at rock bottom. They were at rock bottom, but the one thing that people have to remember about coaching, you can't coach if you can't forget. They have to pull the shade on down on what happened last week. They have to forget about it totally. They have to do everything they possibly can to play well this afternoon, do everything they can to win the game, and being on the field with them before the game, I have a feeling that they're going to play a very good game here this afternoon. The coin toss had been won by the Eagles. They want the football. Jeff Hayes will kick off. And back deepest for the Eagles is Glenn Young. He has averaged 19 and a half yards per kick return. The field in good playing shape. Temperature is in the low 60s, 62 degrees. Unbelievable weather for this time of year. And this crowd will make some noise. 55,000 plus. Young takes it. One yard deep. 15-20. Only the kicker is there. And he slows them down. And the Eagles go from the Washington 49. Jeff Hayes slowed him down. Otis Wansley brought him down. And what a blazing start from two yards deep in the end zone. We'll watch it again as Glenn Young made a brilliant return. And the great thing about it, Jack, he was very decisive. He got through the crack. He should have been tackled right about the 10-yard line. He changes the ball so he can use it to help with a straight arm. He cuts back to the inside. A really a beautiful run. They have great field, field position on the plus 49. That doesn't happen to the Redskins very often. Motion by Haddix and a give to the fullback. And with the ball is Hubie Oliver. He's down to the 45 as we check the offense. Darrell Grant made that tackle. Ron Jaworski is the quarterback. Michael Haddix, Hubie Oliver in the backfield with them. Tony Woodruff and Mike Quick are the wide receivers. Up front, Jerry Sizemore is back in the lineup. He and Moraldi are the tackles. Kenny and Baker the guards. Moore is the center. And Vito Cab is the tight end. Second and six. to the right, quick in motion, and Jaworski delays the ball, Up. first down perhaps, no, nope. his knee touched down at the 40, Haddock's carried, and it's going to be third down and one. We check the defense of the Redskins as Monty Coleman made that tackle, Todd Liebenstein is back in the lineup, he and Manley are the ends, Bucks and Grant the tackles, Kaufman, Olkowitz, and Malott are the linebackers, Green and Dean on the corners, Jordan, the strong safety, and Mark Murphy, who leads the league in interceptions with eight, is the other safety man. Third down and one. This is when the Redskins are tough, Hank. Yeah, they are tough here. First down for the Eagles. Yumi Oliver followed Michael Williams through the hole. And they got a first down, and the offensive line apparently did a good job. Yeah, Dean Miraldi, the left tackle, Steve Kenny, Morris, Baker, and Mitchell, or I should say Sizemore. Boy, they got off the ball in good shape. They made something happen up front, 
and gave enough running room for Oliver to get up the middle and make the first down. I'll bet they've caught the attention of the Redskins here, haven't they? Well, I tell you, you know, I was really impressed being on the field with them before the game. There's a great attitude. They seemed very loose and very excited about doing a good job here this afternoon. The ball at the Redskin 37, first down. Jaworski's first pass. How about that? Out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. With the ball was Mike Quick. That's his 51st reception of the year, and Jaworski was on the money. There's Quick. He's had nine touchdowns. The key, Jack, play action fake. Pulls the defense very well. He's got a lot of time to step and throw. He runs an inside-outside pattern. Uh, number 32, Vernon Dean, gets him turned, breaks to the outside, and the ball is right on the money. Well, they're already down into the territory where they can get some points. Oliver goes on a wing. Michael Haddock saves the tailback. Have the tight end on the right side. To the 10-yard line goes Michael Haddock's a loose ball. Well, that's what happened to the Eagles the first time they played Washington. The Redskins think they have it at the 10. A lot of funny things happen in that pileup down there. The Redskins really think they have it, and they do. Isn't that a shame, Hank? It is for, it is for uh, the Eagles. And I was going to say something, too, Jack. I think when you're 4-8 and eight, and supposed to have been a pretty good team and have a good season, at 4-8, and eight, you're a lot better off to play away from home than you are to play at home. Watch what happens now. Okowicz recovers the fumble, number 52. Yeah, Okowicz is in the bottom of the pile, and they kind of squeeze him from the outside in, and he pops the ball loose. Yeah. He saw his club move down, only to fumble at the 10-yard line. Now Theismann with Riggins from the 10-yard line. Walker in motion. Here comes Riggins. ball and does it belong to the Eagles no they say that Riggins was down well, the Eagles thought they had it but it's a 12 yard run and here again the key has to be anytime that you put anytime that you play uh, against a team that uses an odd space and the key has to be the block of the center and look at Jeff Bostic come off the ball and get a good block and knock Ken Clark to the left Open a big seam right up the middle, and he plows right through there for a big first down. Boy, what a good start for the Washington Redskins. Herman Edwards made the tackle at the Washington 22-yard line. Two tight ends, Didier and Walker. Motion by Charlie Brown. Riggins fakes one way, goes the other, and comes out near the 15-yard line before Ken Clark tackled him the nose guard check the offense of the Redskins with Theismann the quarterback John Riggins the lone setback Art Monk and Charlie Brown the wide receivers Clint Didier one tight end the other tight end Rick Walker with Jacoby Grimm Bostic May and Stark up front they're fortunate they start the same people up front every week and the great thing about it is you know they have great durability they play all the time they dance every dance second and seven from the 25. And Riggins is to the 29-yard line, tackled by Wes Hopkins. Third down coming up, third and three. Defense is Greg Brown, Ken Clark, and they've moved Dennis Harris into the right end to match up with Joe Jacoby. The linebackers are Wilkes, Robinson, Griggs, and Williams. The deep backs are Young and Edwards on the corner. Ellis and the good hitter Wes Hopkins at the free safety. And they also move Greg Brown, who normally plays right in, they moved him to left in because they think the matchups physically are going to be much better that way than they would if they kept both Harrison and Brown on the same side. Let's see if Theisman throws for the first time. He will. Over the middle, and Brown caught it first down at the 40 yard line. He looked to the sideline where Giaquinto was covered, and then he drilled it over the middle. That's the great thing about Theismann. Watching, he looks off. He looks off the receivers and defensive backs. The defensive backs are reading the quarterback. They're looking at him. He looks to the left and then rifles the ball right on the numbers inside. And uh, the tackle is finally made by Herman Edwards, number 46. 
So it's the second first down for the Redskins after recovering the fumble. We have we have 10 minutes left in the first quarter. No score. Walker is on a wing. And motion by Art Monk. First down pass. Fake short throws long. And it is incomplete. Incomplete downfield for Charlie Brown. He gave the defender Herman Edwards a little shove in the back. You can do that as long as the official doesn't see it, Jack. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> the clock stops. 9.43 left in the first quarter. No score. There's Theismann. He's completed 60% of his passes. Here's the Philadelphia defense. Number one in the pass. But they can't stop anybody on the ground. Well, I think the number one in the pass, Jack, because everybody tries to run so much that they don't throw the ball nearly as much, so they don't put as much pressure on the defense for that reason. Second down and ten. Monk to the right, Brown to the left. Joe Washington's in the lineup. Walker in motion. Little Joe running right. And he's good for about three, third and seven. Boy, the defense of the Eagles are chasing like gangbusters, and I think any time that you fake that kind of a handoff and Theismann would roll around the other side or a reverse misdirection would be a very, very effective play. And Charlie Brown is one of their good reverse runners. Yes, he's averages 13.3 per try on four reverses so far this season. Jerry Robinson made that last tackle, bringing about third down and seven. The Redskin 43. Joe Washington still in there. Brown did not get a first down. He's shy about a half a yard. Wes Hopkins knocked him out. You know, that's one of the few times I've seen Joe very undecisive. He did not get the ball to Brown soon enough. Had he thrown it to him, he was wide open in the middle. Waited too long to get the ball to him. And for that reason, he didn't make the necessary yardage for the first down. And Theismann comes off, and uh, he appeared to be a little upset. And into the game to do the punting. John Shira back to get it. We find uh, Jeff Hayes. He has averaged 39 yards per kick, and he has run out of punt formation a couple of times. And he's really a great athlete. He runs a 40 and 4-5, Jack. And was a high school quarterback, so he's got a lot of athletic skill. it high. Shira fumble the ball. Washington has it. Man, he was crazy, Hank, not to call for a fair catch. They're right on top of him. But they looked like they were very close to him, Jack. I, you know, they have, he has to be given the opportunity to make a fair catch. I don't know whether they had that opportunity or not. Jeff Bostic recovered the fumble by Shira. Bostic, Stuart Anderson was there, made the hit on him, and then Bostic fell on the ball. And here are the Redskins. They've done it again. This is the second time they've taken the ball from the Eagles today. Look at this. Fumbles. Redskins have taken away 11. Intercepted six for a total of 17. The Russian Redskins, 18 fumbles have taken away. Intercepted 25, a total of 43. Boy, that's a big difference. The ball is at the Eagle 18. Eight minutes left in this scoreless first quarter. He gets a jump on the ball, gets in front, tips it. Monk maintains the concentration, makes the catch in the end zone, touchdown, they go ahead. And the extra point by Mosley is good. He's missed only one this year. And it's 7 to nothing with 7.55 left in the first quarter. They gave the ball to the Redskins twice. It's the first four games of the year with a bad knee. Now here we see, again, Roynell Young coming in. He really thinks maybe he has a chance to make the interception, but he... 
it's a little bit too high. He tips the ball, and of course, Monk keeps concentration and makes the catch for the touchdown. It was good for a 17-yard pass play, and here comes the kickoff from Jeff Hayes, and back to get it is Glenn Young. Young is a rookie out of Mississippi State. This comes to one of the wingmen taken by Ray Ellis. And this kick return, not as good as the other, out to the 25-yard line. This Saturday, a college football and basketball doubleheader on CBS at noon Eastern time. Florida State with their outstanding running back, Greg Allen, takes on their interstate rival, Florida. Then at 4 o'clock, one of college basketball's great rivalries will be renewed. Indiana, they were upset last night, meeting the powerful Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky demolished Louisville last night. All of that next Saturday on CBS Sports and a special feature with Eric Parsegi. From the Philadelphia 25, down pass. Why? And it is incomplete. Incomplete. Tony Woodruff jumped high, had a hand on it, and Mark Murphy knocked him cuckoo. The ball was really thrown a little bit behind him. It was a tough catch. Minnesota. Minnesota trying to stay ahead of Detroit leads at New Orleans three to nothing in the first quarter. If this game, the Eagle and the Redskin game, becomes lopsided. Some of you viewers may be switched over to watch that Minnesota-New Orleans game on CBS this afternoon. Second and ten. And that pass is dropped. Trying to get it was Vito Cab, the tight end. He had the linebacker. Now Kaufman right on top of him. And now the Bears, underdogs, playing at home, lead the 49ers 3 to nothing in the first quarter. And that's another game that some of you folks may be switched to if this one becomes lopsided. Cleveland trying to get within a game of the Steelers is ahead of Baltimore 7 to 3 in the first quarter. There's Art Monk, missed the first four games with a bad knee. He has this game's only score. Third and 10, Philadelphia. Washington has five defensive backs in the game. He gets a first down. He is down to the 46-yard line. That's the 18th time he has run with the ball. He's not that good a runner, but he did a great job. First down to the 46. Now watch. Here's a good shot from the end zone. Watch. Watch the seam on the outside. Look at this. Right in between the guard and the tackle. He's very decisive. Makes up his mind quickly. And he runs as fast as he can go. Tony Woodruff made a good block for him, number 83. Yes, and he finally tackled, but he makes a necessary yardage for the first down. And that's the thing, uh, dimension, that the quarterback has to have in this day and age in professional football. You have to be able to escape pressure, and he did a good job that time. It's Oliver and Haddix in the backfield. Michael Haddix running with a very good drive got inside the 45 to the 43 and Neil Okowitz stopped him number 52 along with Dexter Manley number 72 this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League it is intended for the private use of our audience any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Washington Redskins and the National Football League is prohibited second and seven stunt stunt with the tackles going inside and the ends going outside there you see number 77 going to the outside Daryl Grant ends coming inside and they follow up the blocking responsibilities of the Philadelphia Eagles and they get penetration and sack the quarterback Jaworski sacked now 34 times this year third down and 15 at his own 49 extra defensive back Anthony Washington for the Redskins Philadelphia. Five 
29 left in the first quarter. A touchdown pass start Monk and the Redskins lead seven to nothing. Tenth year now went to the sideline talked with the coach and with Joe Pizarchik the other quarterback there's Marion Campbell his club is confronted with third and 15. Tony McGee and Perry Brooks comes in come in for the Redskins to help with the pass rush. Let's watch the release time from Jaworski. See how long it takes him to drop back and get rid of him. Quick in motion. Oh, right through the hands of Tony Woodruff. Look at Jaworski. I don't blame you. I don't blame you, Ron. He couldn't have thrown the ball any better. You could, you just couldn't kept walk over and carry it over there and lay it in his hands any better than that, Jack. It was a perfectly thrown ball right on the money, and that hurts. Here we see the shot, making an outside move, right on the money, and just dropped the football. Well, the Eagles haven't done much right. They've fumbled the ball twice, and they've dropped a few balls. Drop balls have been one of the biggest problems all year. Back to get it, Virgil C., rather than Mike Nelms, who has a bad knee. And C is going to watch it go out of bounds. A good kick by Hayes. He's terrific in putting that ball out of bounds. 24 times now he's kicked it out of bounds inside the 20. At their 14-yard line. There's the story. 7-0. 5-15 left in the first quarter. Riggins likely to carry the ball. Philadelphia strung it out, and it's a one-yard gain at most. They played that one very well, Hank. Yeah, they really did. You talk about a skating contest. It's very uh, interesting to see the offensive scheme blocking of the Washington Redskins. They kind of reach for the outside shoulder of the defensive person and just try to run them out of there. And then Riggins has a choice to pick any cavity, any seam he has a chance to run through and take it. That time he tried to get outside. And the Eagles defense really responded very, very well to the play. Reggie Wilkes strung it out, and Ray Ellis made the tackle at the 15. It's second and nine. Giaquinto checks in. Joe Washington checks in. Giaquinto in motion. And they delay it to Washington. And the tackle near the 20-yard line, making it third down and four. Joel Williams, the tackler. And they told us that frequently the defense has a tough time finding Joe Washington, seeing the little fella. Well, as big as the offensive linemen are, the left tackle, for example, is 6'7". The left, uh, uh, the left guard is 6'3". The right guard is 6'6". The right tackle is 6'5". All you do, really, is see the top of his head talking about Joe Washington. And he's hard to find and hard to tackle. Third down and four. Six defensive backs, including Bernard Wilson and Randy Logan for the Eagles. And Theismann will throw. A flag is down. And that's a first down, but we'll check the flag. On the run by Theismann, Carl Hairston tackled in 78. It's got to be a holding penalty, Jack. It looks like from where he threw the flag, it, normally when they throw it in that area, it's a holding penalty. And the referee, Jerry Seaman, tells us it is holding. This referee... Seaman was telling me about the big snowstorm that hit his hometown of Minneapolis. Compare that with the weather we have here, Hank. See all the visitors around the nation's capital this it was really weekend? Fun, fun to see that yesterday, wasn't it? Well, I've never been here when there were so many visitors, and they all seem to be having a great time. And, Morning, uh, number 74, offense. And the weather was perfect for that kind of a visit. A call against George Stark, the right tackle. Third down and 14 for the Redskins. Let's let you listen to Theismann. Nothing doing as he tried to get the ball down to little Alvin Garrett. Roynell Young was covering. Garrett had sped by him, but the pass was overthrown. And Jeff Hayes will be called upon to punt. It'll be interesting to see as we go along, too, how the Eagles play the dash play, which is a rollout, a moving of the pocket by the Washington Redskins. Seisman runs that play as well as anybody in the league. He hasn't run it so far, 
but I'm sure we'll see it as the game progresses. John Shira back to get the punt, anxious to atone for the fumble earlier. Not the best of kicks and out of bounds inside the Washington 40 yard line. So the Eagles. As we look at Joe Gibbs, will have very good starting position. They trail by the score of seven to nothing with 3:59 left in the first quarter. And Joe Gibbs uh, had a birthday on Friday, didn't he? What is he? 43. He did. The ball is at the Washington 37. Next play, Dart Monk has the Redskins on top. Leonard Mitchell is playing the right tackle. Jerry Sizemore has a bad ankle and may not return. This would be a good time for a play action pass here, Jack, on first and ten. That's the second time they've sacked him. Looked like Daryl Grant led the way and brought Dave Butts with him. Boy, that looked like a screen pass that time, as fast as they got in there. Uh, that's why I thought maybe maybe on first down the, the first the play action would have been a little better. There you see Okowitz blitzing up the middle. You see number 55. Uh, blitzing from the other side. Kaufman. Yeah, Mel Kaufman, and uh, they get through the gaps. Nobody picks them up, but they sack Jaworski for a big loss of eight yards. Back to the 46-yard line of Washington. They show the blitz again. Four-man rush with a stunt. Pass wide open. Good yards to Hubie Oliver. Very close to a first down. Very close to a first down, and uh, looks like he's a little bit shy. Watch the tackles. The tackles go to the outside, and the ends come inside. That takes a little time, Jack, and they do a good job of pass protecting. Has plenty of time to step and throw, and Jorski can do that. Has time to throw. He's going to shoot your eyes out. He he's got that kind of ability. Clock stopped. There's Joe Gibbs. 3:09 left in the first quarter. They measure to see if it's first down. We saw Charlie Brown, number 87, a couple of inches short. It's going to be third down, third down and a foot. All of the Washington, 27. Usually in a situation like this, Jack, with less than a yard, the quarterback will usually quarterback sneak it. Let's see if that's what Jaworski is going to do on this play. Jaworski is 6'2", 192. Big enough to sneak the ball. The other good thing is a possibility sometimes in this situation where you're four and eight, third and short, play action pass is very good. You might wind up with a big play. You still come back with fourth down to get a less than eight up. They put in Jim Critchie as a tight end, number 72. Haddock's on a wing, Williams in the backfield, Oliver with the ball. He didn't get much, but he got a first down. First down. Charles Mann, number 71, was the first one there, along with Rich Mallott. Well, let's go to New York and see what Brett Musburger has for us. Jack, a couple of teams are seeking a spot in the playoffs. Minnesota kicked a field goal. New Orleans came back with this touchdown. Wayne Wilson up over the top. Fourth down play, and the bum went for it. Let's go back to Jack and Hank. Thank you, Brent. So Minnesota scored first, and now New Orleans has come back. That's a first down at the 27-yard line. The fellow who made that last tackle, Charles Mann, is in there now, number 71. They tell me that he's going to be something. He's spelling Dexter Manley at the right defensive end spot. He's an athlete. He's an athlete. And uh, they drafted a number three in 1983. But they think he's really going to be a good one. First down, Eagles. Well, they gave him quite a bit of time, but Charles Mann got in there, number 71. That's the third sack of the Philadelphia quarterback. Yeah, it looked like he was trying. It looked like he was trying to hit inside that time, hit a receiver inside, and they had him double covered. There you see the rush. Butts, number 65, coming to the outside, but there you see Mann, number 71, comes inside. Normally they go outside. That time he came inside, 
and got penetration and made the play. This young fellow is from Nevada, Las Vegas, 6'6", 250, Charles Mann. Second down, 14. And he was a tight end in high school. Tight end gets a first down inside the 15 to Vito Cab. And Jaworski doesn't let those sacks rattle him. He's been around the block. No, he's he's got that great ability to forget it and come right back. They flood the zone on to our right, looking at the picture. They flood it, meaning they got three receivers. And then the tight end, the tight end delays and comes across the middle. There you see him wide open. They're all concerned about the outside area. Cab does a good job of holding on to the football. The ball is at the Redskin 13-yard line. Haddock's in the backfield. What a good run, huh? What a good run inside the 10 down near the 6-yard line. You know, the, the thing that happened on the last play, they had both linebackers coming up in the gaps right up the middle, and they ran right at it. They ran right at it and blocked it and made good yardage on the play. Harold Grant and Charles Mann made the tackle. A pickup of six yards by Michael Haddix, the rookie out of Mississippi State. One thing you have to be concerned about with a rookie, if he makes a mistake, sometimes he, he worries about it and makes another mistake. Haddix seems to be come back good from that fumble he had earlier. Now the running play is down inside the five. Marked down at the five, making it third and two. Charles Mann, another tackle. As Haddock's carried again. The right tackle is Leonard Mitchell. So it's Moraldi and Mitchell at the tackles. He has, he had a little trouble last week in the game against the Giants. Now the first quarter has come to a close. Chevrolet is applying the wheels. Chevrolet and you taking charge. By light beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. We had a snappy first quarter. There's Harold Carmichael back in the lineup. He's tough down in this territory. Yeah, if he get one on one, Darrell Green's got him one on one. Third down and two at the Redskin five. Extremely long count and the running play and right to the goal line goes Hubie Oliver. He was stopped by Olkowitz and Jordan. Oliver does not have a rushing touchdown all year. And the right tackle, Leonard Mitchell, Ron Baker, the right guard. They had a pretty good surge there. And Hubie Oliver already finished good. He came into the pile and got through and came out the other end. A Oliver. good run by Oliver. First time these two teams met, Washington won at 23-13. The score here would raise some eyebrows. They're leaning right here, see what they call. Second man, Williams, he is tackled for a loss on the play by Darrell Grant. The rookie, Michael Williams, looking for his first professional touchdown. Really wasn't very decisive work. Well, that, that time was a counter play, which is an unusual play in that situation. And unusual to have to take the ball from the right halfback position all the way across the formation to the other side. You have to hold your blocks a long time, and it's a tough thing to do. It's second and goal from the two. It's Oliver and Williams in the eye. Maddox on a wing. Touchdown to the wing back, Hubie Oliver, his second touchdown of the year. Well, this score is going to catch the attention of folks around the country, isn't it? Yes, it is. And as, as a good call, a play action fake from the I formation, faking to the right side. Not really a very good fake at all. The mesh between the back and the quarterback, but it didn't make any difference. Oliver was wide open up the outside in the flat. They blew coverage. They Ran was, away from the linebacker. Yeah, Monty Moore came in, took a sniff of the fake. Monty Coleman, I'm sorry, came inside, took a whiff of the fake, and was looked to the outside. Tony Franklin has missed two this year. He's 17 out of 19. Jaworski holding. We 
We are tied, folks. It is 7-7 with 13-33 remaining in the half. A good drive after a bad punt. Marion Campbell on the sideline. Well, the Eagles, Hank, didn't come here to get kicked around, did they? No, they did. And I mentioned earlier, I, this is the fans in Philadelphia have to understand this, but at this stage of the season, when they're 4-8, and eight, I mentioned it earlier, you're a lot better off to play away from home because you relax and uh, you uh, just kind of let it hang out and play uh, with uh, a lot more emotion away from home because you know that if something bad happens, you're not going to be criticized right off the bat. And Philadelphia, so far this season, is 0-6 at home. Here is the kick, and Wansley takes it on the 18 for the 25-30. And out of bounds at about his 33-yard line, Rich Cranach bumped him out. Well, let's look at the leaders in the American Football Conference. You see the Raiders have the best record of all. The Steelers, after losing Thursday, are 9-4. and four. Miami plays tomorrow. They're 8-4. and four. And the Raiders will entertain the Giants, and you'll see that game later here on CBS Sports. A lot of you viewers will see that game. I want to mention, Jack, that what I just said about playing away from home refers to all teams in the last of the football league with this kind of record. They're better off to play away than they are at home. From the 33 with Joe Washington. And the big tight end caught that one. These tight ends are all over the field for the Redskins. That was Rick Walker. And with regard to the other part of the doubleheader, you see the Minnesota trailing down in New Orleans, 7-5. and five. Detroit right on their heels. And Green Bay could uh, equal the record of Detroit and perhaps be in a tie if they can win at Atlanta. And that game will be viewed by a lot of you folks here on CBS. The ball rests at the Washington 41, second and two. You know, Washington really is an amazing team. They come in with about 12 running plays and about 35 different formations, but they get a lot of good repetitions because they run the same play so many times. Joe Washington gets a first down. Boy, almost broke it, folks. He's at the Eagle 48, tackled by Wes Hopkins. Well, that was a, that was a counter play and a great block by Russ Grimm, the left guard, pulling and trapping on the play. Watch him. To our left. He's number 68. Number 68. They open up a good seam. And uh, Washington pops right through there for a big game. And Joe Jacoby was also out there helping with the blocking. It's a first down at the 48 of Philadelphia. No! We're tied. 7-7, 12-35 left in the half. That good blocking, didn't he? Looked like he got nothing. He got five. Looked like Riggins, didn't he? He did. <laughs> a miniature Riggins. Reggie Wilkes, the tackler. Let's watch the center, 53. Watch, watch 53, Jeff Bostick. Watch him block on number 71. He gets a good inside position, maintains the block. He's still maintaining it, pushing back. He gets caught in the pile, talking about Ken Clark, number 71. And that's what you have to do. You have to stay in front, stay with him like a piece of abalone in a rock, and let the back pick his way and make something happen. Second and five at the Eagle 43. Monk in motion. Screen to Washington. He got back to the line of scrimmage. It's third and five. Covered by Roynell Young. On that kind of a play. Now that was a counter play from the counter play running play that we just saw. They faked the counter play and threw back to the back Joe Washington. But here you see it. He throws back away from the grain, anticipating good pressure from the rollout. But watch Joe. Right or wrong, you have to make a decision. He'd have been better off to just make a decision and cut inside. But he danced right, left, right, and by the time he gets through with the dance, why the defense is there to recover and make a play. Alvin Garrett checks in. Nick Giaquinto is in the backfield. Third and five. Boy, they don't miss, do they? And they had the match they wanted. They had Giaquinto on Randy Logan. And that's what you want. You want Rick. They had him man for man. Watch him come out of the backfield on the left side of the picture. Good protection. 
He looks downfield and throws in the outside. There you see him licking the linebacker. I mean, licking the defensive back. They double cover the outside people and finally get there, but way too late. Roy Hill Young, number 43, made the tackle. First down at the Philadelphia 19. That was a third down play. Well, we haven't seen Riggins come back in. I don't know why. We'll have to check on that. to the 15, a four-yard run. Tackle by Anthony Griggs, the inside linebacker. Riggins is standing along the sideline. He'd been out earlier with a back injury, but we haven't heard of any injuries sustained today. Little Joe Washington loves it when he gets a chance to play like yeah, this. Yeah, he loves to play. He doesn't think he carries the ball nearly enough, and uh, he's getting a lot of work here this afternoon. Second and six. For the right guard that time, Mark May in the center, Jeff Bostic. Really did a good job of coming off the ball and blowing the man on the nose of the center way back off the line of spin. Walker in motion. A busted play. Looks like a, a clip. Looks like a clip. We've got a flag. Looks like Charlie Brown, 87. Was that a busted play, Hank? I think it was. It was. No question about it. It was a busted play. And sometimes they can be very effective because they're key breakers. Penalty against the Redskins will nullify the touchdown. Marion Campbell likes that. It's funny how that works, Jack. You know, everybody was pulling. They sold out on the play, meaning that they went through their respective responsibilities. So the defense reacts to those linemen, react to the linemen, and a busted play like that sometimes can be very effective, which it was there. Holding number 87, offense. Charlie Brown was caught. That stops the clock with 9.14 left in the half. The ball put down at the Eagle 15, and it's second down and nine. Second down and uh, six. Score tied, seven all. Monk is in the slot. Walker in motion. Joe Washington. Walker's a good blocker. Washington is down to the nine-yard line. The key to the play that time was a block on Joe Williams, number 59, the right linebacker by the tight end. He stayed with his block, and Joe raced to the outside. And... Uh, but out there in good shape. Here comes Riggins back in. I was wondering about him. Wansley is the fullback. Riggins will be the tailback. And it's third down and about a foot. The ball is just inside the tent. Who do you think is going to get the ball? You know, Jack, I can hardly, I, I couldn't guess. <laughs> Never guess. First down, first and goal. Riggins to the seven. Tackle by Anthony Griggs and Jerry Robinson, the two very good inside linebackers. Okay, Riggins comes back out and Washington back in. He may not, he must not be full speed, eh? Something must be wrong with him. And normally what happens, uh, talking to Joe Gibbs, he said we just let let John uh, handle the substitution on himself. Whatever he feels right, he stays in. If he doesn't, he comes out. We don't we do not do it ourselves. He doesn't. So evidently, he's coming out. He doesn't feel good. First and goal from the seventh. Monk and Brown to the left. Bill Washington, who played at Oklahoma, knows how to find that end zone, and he got down to about the two-yard line. Wes Hopkins hit him along with Ken Clark. Here comes Riggins back in. Along with the third tight end, Mike Williams. They move these personnel around to fit the situation. Yeah, they take advantage of it. They get everybody in the game, and everybody makes a contribution, which makes for a very, very healthy situation. Wansley and Riggins in the backfield. Riggins has 19 rushing touchdowns this year Jeff Boss 
Bostick and Russ Grimm. Boy, they really blow people off the line of scrimmage there. Look at that room. He goes right through there. Standing up for the touchdown. It's an NFL record. 20 rushing touchdowns in a season. 14 to 7 Washington. Exactly seven and a half left in the half. There's a good shot of John Riggins. 20th TD rushing this year for a new NFL record. And I talked to him before the game. I'm only interested to see what backs say about synthetic turf and also natural terrain. He loves to run naturally on this kind of situation with the natural grass. He says that the running on synthetic turf hurts his knees and he doesn't like to pound it. Glenn Young from the 2 to the 10. Boy, he's fine. He really did a good job and came out to the 29-yard line. A good kickoff return. Notice Wansley made the tackle. That scoring drive, 11 plays, 67 yards, 603. And back on top. Later today, the Giants will be visiting the Raiders. I showed you the standings earlier, and the Raiders have that 9 and 3 mark. And Green Bay and Atlanta meeting. An important game for both of them. Atlanta is still alive, by the way, in their division. Trailing by seven, Jaworski passes on first down. How about that? To Mike Quick, covered by Vernon Dean. No flags, a big play for the Eagles. And the other thing, Jack, is there's a great illustration of when you're even, you're leaving. Look at this now. He's right about even with him, and watch him run away from him. He just runs at, runs away from Vernon Dean, who never sees the ball. The ball is thrown beautifully right up on top, and Mike Quick makes a beautiful catch. 44-yard pickup. 44 yards to the Washington 17. Whoa, great play that one. Almost had it. Jaworski threw it very quickly to Mike Quick. He almost made a fantastic grab as he ran away from Vernon Dean. But it, what happened that time, they had a zone and they hit him right down the seam and Jaworski recognized it right away, got rid of the ball perfectly, got rid of it quickly, and it just was dropped. It looked like it should have been caught, Jack. It is second down and 10 at the Redskins 17-yard line. Michael is to the left. Quick to the right. It's a blitz. Touchdown! They beat the blitz. And, and Mike Quick beat Vernon Dean, number 32. Vernon Dean is playing him man for man. Depending on what side it goes, that doesn't make any difference. He's playing man for man. And uh, they blitzed on the play, which means he got one-for-one one coverage. Watch the blitz. They picked it up very well. Jaworski stayed right in the pocket, delivered the ball beautifully, and Vernon D, number 32, makes the tackle, but way too late. He goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Good execution on the part of the Eagles. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Three plays. And there's Joe Gibbs. The Redskins are a little shaken by what's happening as Tony Franklin tries to tie it up. Guy Morris snaps the ball, and the Eagles have caught him again. 14 all with 6.14 left in the half. A scintillating drive by Philadelphia. Quick click for two touchdowns, 153 yards, 117, boom, touchdown. And they had that kind of ability to do that. They, they, they can't waste a lot of time running the football, Jack. To win this game, they have to depend on the forward pass. I think they felt that way coming into the game. They want to run just enough to keep them off balance. But I think the big gun, the big weapon has to be the forward pass, and it's proven to be that way so far. Franklin will kick to Virgil C. He's inside his five. Takes it on the four. Good wedge out in front of him. And down he goes at the 27. Mike Nelms has a bad knee, and so C is doing the returning. Bill Cower made the tackle. 
Look at that. Minnesota back ahead of New Orleans in the second quarter, 10 to 7, as the Vikings try to stay ahead of Detroit by a game. And Tampa Bay is. Well, that's Gordon, not right, is it? That's not right. Chicago's playing the 49ers. The player is injured. The clock is stopped with 6.05 left in the half. And we see one of the Eagles, Perry Harrington, stretched out. As they tend to him, we'll take a little break. We're deadlocked at 14. <laughs> Off the field under his own power, and that's good. The ball is at the Redskin 28. They've got their hands full, folks. Riggins is in there. He threw the ball downtown to Charlie Brown. And a big pickup to the Eagle 49-yard line. And downtown is right because he makes a big gain on the play. He catches the ball. Watch, he comes off the ball without any pressure whatsoever. Coming down the outside of the numbers and catches it right inside the numbers. The ball was thrown after he had gone about 12 yards, and he caught it about 20. A beautiful play. He's shaken up. Herman Edwards made the tackle at the Eagle 49-yard line. When they throw, when Riggins is in there, it's a definite advantage for the Redskins. Walker in motion. Big John running. Got about eight yards. Tackled by Wes Hopkins. What a collision that was. Want to mention in passing. Well, take care of this first, Hank. Watch the left tackle, Joe Jacoby, come off the ball. Look at him. He takes the defensive end and knocks him to the outside. Oh, that Hopkins hit him, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, Hopkins really gave him a shot, number 48. It's really something when one guy knocks Riggins down. That doesn't happen very often. Seven-yard pickup by Riggins. And Hopkins only weighs 205. And he unloaded on him. He hits like he's 240. That's a first down. And they love it here. Another sellout crowd. The 128th consecutive sellout in this stadium. Jerry Robinson, the tackler. Now the Bears and the 49ers are tied 3-3 in the second quarter. We have some very close scores today, and Tampa Bay is ahead of Houston 12-0 second quarter. The Jets ahead of New England, coming off a big Monday night win, and Cleveland's ahead of Baltimore as Cleveland tries to get within one game of the Steelers. First down at the Eagle 36. Three flicker. There it is. Incomplete. Boy, he must have dropped it on the way down, Jack. It looked like he had it. It was Art Monk. Yep. The old recess football play. Fake. They give it to Riggins. Hopkins, number 48, ends up covering the play. Yeah, they give it to Riggins. Riggins puts on the brakes, throws it back to Theismann. Theismann delivers it a lot of time right over the top. Right over the top. A beautiful catch by Monk, but they must have taken it away from him on the way down. Okay, watch it from a different angle. Now look at the release. Watch Hopkins. He licks Hopkins right over the top. He's got a jump. And looks like he had it, but Hopkins evidently took the ball away from him. That's what happened. It's second down and 10 at the 36. Great play by Hopkins. Only 349 left in the half. Incomplete. And Theisman did well to avoid the sack and the loss. And Dennis Harrison was chasing him around. And chased him out. Watch Dennis Harrison, number 68, the right end. Here he now he now Wilkes and, gets a hand on him. And Brown comes to the inside. And Harrison chased him out, and made him throw the ball. And made him throw the ball, got a shot at him, and made him throw the ball and falls incomplete. It's third down and ten. 339 left in the half. We're tied 14 off. Complete. Charlie Brown covered by Hopkins. Hopkins is only a rookie out of SMU. Boy, did he make another great play. The timing uh, of, the, of the knockdown of the ball was perfect. 
Now here's that dash play we were talking about. Joe Theismann rolls out to his left. Watch him. The ball's in the air, and right about the time it gets to Brown, Hopkins knocks the ball loose. A good play. A lot of times in that situation, the defensive back would use his left hand to lean on the back of the receiver and knock it down. That time he did it in good shape. Here's a punt to Shire from Jeff Hayes. 3.32 left in the half. This kid's been terrific kicking the ball out of bounds. He's kicked five of them inside the five, Jack. He hangs it high, and they're going to let it go. Was the ball touched by Philadelphia? It was, and it belongs to the Redskins. I just mentioned they've to recover five. Five balls inside the five. Now they get another one inside the five. Greg Williams recovered the ball. That's the third time they've turned it over. Williams at number 47. He got the ball. Now watch. It bounces up. It hits the Eagle player who's trying to get out of the way. Number 41. It's Dave Logan. Or Randy Logan. Randy Logan. And it was recovered by Greg Williams and it's first and goal at the three. and Riggins and he's pushed back clock runs now it stops as they unpile they'll start it again 314 left in the half Greg Brown and Dennis Harrison were there how's Harrison doing against Jacoby hey eh? you know they I, I think Jacoby is doing a good job of running and run blocking on on the Harrison and it looks like it really hasn't been a factor so far. In other words, I don't think the change has been as beneficial as they thought it might be. Second and goal from the two. Didier in motion. Good block by Didier. Touchdown. His second today, his 21st of the year. Watch the good surge again by the offensive line. Didier does a good job. Jacoby does a good job. Grimm does a good job. And, of course, all you need is a crack for Riggins, and he's going to bounce it through there for the touchdown. Mark Mosley has gone by Garrow Yepremian on the all-time scoring list. He has 1,076 points. It's a seven-point lead again, the third time Washington's led by three. Time that the Redskins have led by seven points in the game. Only two plays, three yards after the third Eagle turnover, two of which led directly to Washington touchdowns. And we talked earlier about the fact that they've recovered five balls coming into this game inside the five. They get another one today, makes it six, which is really incredible. Hayes has done a remarkable job of kicking the ball up in the air and making it stay within that five-yard area, although he had some help this time because the ball was touched by... He's their kickoff man, Glenn Young, and takes it on the four. And he's tackled at the 26-yard line. So the Eagles have two minutes and 39 seconds. They have two timeouts. That Hayes looks like he's dwarfed against some of the bigger players, but he's 5'11", 175. Get a chance Joe to, Gibbs with Rick Walker. Excuse me, Jack. Get a chance to... Uh, Introduce Willie Lanier, our great linebacker at Kansas City. He's an all-pro and played in our Super Bowl teams. He's doing great in this area, in the stocks and bonds business. Willie Lanier. He's too small to play. Yeah, he's too... <laughs> yeah, say hi, Willie. <laughs> nice, pleasant guy, but brother, could he knock your helmet right off your head? Man. Well, you know, the great thing about him is he's a great hitter, and he can really move. Boy, he can control the sideline as good as any middle linebacker in the game. There's Greg Williams, who recovered the fumble earlier. He's shaking up along the 20-yard line. The Eagles will travel from their 26th. 
John Riggins, another record, his 13th consecutive game with a rushing touchdown. At halftime today, Herb Cross will feature Mr. Stickham. You know who that is. Fred? Fred Politnikoff. Well, we used to get we used to get a snoot full of him. We saw a lot of him. Boy, he caught great, everything, didn't he? He did, everything. And Brent will bring you up to date and all the scores and highlights. I'm anxious to see that feature on Fred Politnikoff. Boy, he was something. I hope they don't show many too many highlights of him against us. <laughs> we caught a lot of them. The thing about it was, Hank, he was not a speed burner. No, he was a possession kind of a receiver, but he was a great move guy, and he made a lot of touchdown passes because a lot of touchdown passes because he controlled the defensive back so well. He'd catch it, you'd hit him, and he'd still hang on to the ball. Here comes Greg Williams off the field. This fellow is from Mississippi State in his second year. Let's watch what happened. This is how he got hurt. Well, we see a shot of it. Right, right down the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Well, the Eagles have ample time to do something about a seven-point deficit here. And they've been throwing, and they've burned the Redskins deep a couple of times with Mike Quick. And now Wilbert Montgomery is into the game. He's to the left side. down Philadelphia at the 39. Well, he hasn't scored a touchdown all year. Talk about Montgomery. Hurry up offense for the Eagles. Neil Okowitz made the tackle. He's playing a wing back position, a flanker on the left side, and this is what he'd like to eventually be. He would like to play outside instead of being a running back, Jack. Is that good? I think it, it is. It is. Down at the 48 of Washington. And a very good catch by Melvin Hoover. Covered by Daryl Green, the rookie. Here we see Jaworski coming back into the pocket. He's able to step and throw. When he can do that, he's going to hit him. Double coverage on the outside, but he gets the ball right on the money. I'm surprised, really, Washington's permitting him to throw outside, Jack. They ought to make him throw inside so they can make him use up a timeout. 2-11 left in the half. Two timeouts remaining for the Eagles. So they actually have three, counting the two-minute warning, which will be coming up. And the middle area now is open. Jaworski was surveying that middle. Throws outside and quick. Couldn't get it. I kind of thought I saw him being held by Vernon Dean. Mike Quick tried to get it, but couldn't shake loose. Did you see what I saw? I thought, yeah, I thought he was too, Jack, but the important thing is the official didn't see it. And again, he got away with it, but it looked like they were definitely holding on the play. It looked like Dean had him around the hips as Quick tried to shake free. Yes, he did. It looked like uh, it looked like the same thing for me. Look at him. If we get a good picture of it here, it's over the top. Watch those hands. No, nah, we don't get a good shot of it. 2.06 left in the half. Second down and 10 at the Redskin 48. Eagles trailing by seven. And see what Jaworski has done. Eight out of 13. Back comes Ken Coffey. To the Philadelphia 40. Jaworski made the tackle. That's something in it. That's his third this year. Oh, I didn't see any flags go down. I didn't either, but evidently... I think maybe he stepped out of bounds back upfield. That's what it is, I think. Now the flag is down. It was thrown along the sideline. There it is. Leo Miles, the head linesman, dropped the flag. And a call against Washington, but... The important thing is, from their viewpoint, they have the ball with 149 left in the half, and that's the fourth Philadelphia turnover. Illegal block, number 55, receiving team. During the return, we have the two-minute warning. 
Okay, Mel Kaufman was the culprit. And they stopped the clock, give the two-minute warning with 1.49 left, actually, in the half. There you see Coffey, number 48. He's got inside position on Montgomery. They both go up for the ball at the same time. The ball was thrown a little bit short and inside, Jack. That ball had to be thrown on the outside shoulder for Montgomery. A good block by Kaufman, number 55. That's the one he was called on, Hank. Yep. And Coffey really did a good job of kind of twinkle going down the sideline there and getting a lot of yardage on the play. Ball at the Washington, 25. Was brought to you by the National Football League. There's Marion Campbell. And there are the timeouts remaining. Eagles 2, Redskins 3. The ball at the Washington 25. Charlie Brown! He's going to score! They won't get him. They will not. a seven touchdown pass caught by Charlie Brown this year. What a difference when that quarterback can scramble, Hank. Yeah, he rolled out. That was a design play and they just overran the play. Number 24 just overran the play. Ray Ellis and Wes Hopkins was blitzing on the play to try to keep Joe Theismann in the pocket. He spotted Joe Brown, Charlie Brown right down the middle and it was all over. Extra point is good. And just like that, the Redskins lead by 14. There's Mark Mosley. He passed Garo Yuprameen today on the all-time scoring list. We have 134 left. An interception and a touchdown. 75 yards. You remember when Charlie Brown came off limping? <laughs> he wasn't limping on that one, was he? No. He's had a great day. And we have a great day for you on CBS. This is a doubleheader day. Plenty of good action at the conclusion of this one. We have the Giants visiting the Raiders. And a lot of you folks will watch that game at the conclusion of this one. And another good matchup, Green Bay against the Falcons in Atlanta. By the way, it's raining down there in Atlanta. Falcons are still alive in the race. Well, Charlie Brown has become the third Redskin to gain a thousand yards receiving in a single season. Bobby Mitchell passed it twice. Charlie Taylor once. Charlie Brown goes into the same category. We're going to see this kickoff team now, Jack. And we talked to Wayne Seaver yesterday. He, he talks about hits in San Diego all the time he was there. Hank Bauer had 121 hits on coverages. So far this season, Cronin's got 119, Barnsley's got 118, Williams 109, and Mann 100. So they're going at a great pace, and they still got three games to go. The kick went out of bounds, and now Jeff Hayes will kick, kick from the 30-yard line. Re-kick, five-yard penalty. From the 30 kick with 134 left. Re-kick, five-yard penalty. It's not automatic when you kick off with this natural grass. No, it surely isn't. And talking about what a hit is, I asked Wayne Saver what that meant, and he said, number one, if we get a turnover, or we get a tackle or a pooch inside the five-yard line, we have five, and they've had five of them coming into this game. A 25-yard punt return is a big play. 40-yard kickoff return is in the same category. Any punt return over 10 yards that winds up inside the 50 is another big play. Uh, any turnover from the defense is a big play. Any onside kick recovery is a big play. And any time you stop them on fourth down is a big play. So that's the categories that they use to determine big hits. And as I mentioned, Cronin's already got 119, and the most ever before was 121 in San Diego by Hank Bauer. Kickoff taken by Ray Ellis across the 20 to the 30-yard line. So the Eagles have 70 yards to go. A flag has been thrown. With 129 left. Otis Wansley made the tackle. Offside on the kickoff. Are the Eagles going to try it again? 
That would make them kick from the 25-yard line. Offside, number 84, kicking team, re-kick, five-yard penalty. Yeah, this kind of a game, you have to make them re-kick it, Jack. You get an extra five yards, and you might spring one for a long gain, a longer gain, and wind up with much, much better field position with one minute and 29 seconds left in the half. Now Hayes kicking uh, all the way back from the 25. It's almost like a free kick after a safety. And uh, if he tries to knock it into the end zone, he may do something else bad. Redskins lead here 28 to 14. Now if this game gets out of hand, some of you folks may be switched to the Bears game. They lead at halftime over the 49ers 10 to 3. Or you will see this game. And at halftime, Minnesota and New Orleans, they're deadlocked at 10 apiece. However, we're still bubbling here, so we'll wait and see what transpires. The Eagles have two timeouts left. The Redskins, three. And Jeff Hayes will kick from the 25-yard line. And Young is the deepest back for the Eagles. And in this game, uh, very obviously, the turnovers have made the difference. Really, the Eagles have played very, very well, but with the exception of the turnover, which it had four. Three fumbles and an interception. Actually, one ball on a punt just hit a man, but fits into the category of a fumble. Hayes kicks a line drive kick. Ellis has a little trouble, picks it up. He's out to the 34-yard line. Jaworski and company will go from there. Bruce Kimball made the Redskin tackle. I not believe the weather we have here. Thank you and I will see the Eagles again next week. They entertain the Rams. That'll be an important game for Los Angeles. It surely will be. There's the story. And the score is 28-14 in favor of the Redskins. Judy Oliver is the running back for Jaworski. Probably the blocking back. He's going to pass. Drop incomplete. Incomplete. Mike Quick had it. He was blasted by Monty Coleman, number 51. Hank and I were out at the uh, training camp yesterday. You saw Quick. He's had a good day. Three receptions, 104 yards, but he dropped that one. And we were talking about Monty Coleman, the linebacker, number 51. Boy, is he put together? Oh, it looks like he's a heavyweight champion of the world. We're talking about boxing. Boy, he's really put together. And talking about practice sessions, I, I was very impressed with the way Washington worked out, much more so than any other team we've seen all year long, Jack. They're at their 35-yard line. Ball is underthrown. Trying to get it to quick. It's third down. Vernon Dean covering. Let's watch Mike Quick, number 82. He's in the middle of the screen. Watch. He breaks to his left. There's a push there. Vernon Dean gives him a little shot in the back. Again, the official did not see him. It was definitely pass interference. Anytime you give him a shot while the ball's in the air, and that's what he did on that last play. Jaworski is confronted with third and ten. One twelve left in the half. He's cooled off a little bit. Four-man front for the Redskins. Are they going to blitz? They've got a double double cover on the outside. Flags go down. One of the interior linemen move, or was Washington offside? Ball start. Ball start. Prior to the snap, number 64. Was Dean Moraldi, the left tackle. Dexter Manley got there in there very quickly that time. The defensive right end, 72, uh, 6'3", 250. He bench presses 500 pounds, Jack. And, Ball start. Uh, prior to the snap, number 64, offense. And he's a deputy sheriff in Fairfax County. You don't think he needs a gun or a car, does he? He just runs them down. He just point his finger at you. That's right. And say bang. Third and 15. <laughs> Amazing. 
amazing. It was caught by Melvin Hoover, and it's first and goal at the three. With 102 left, Monty Coleman tried to stay with it. Yeah, they, they had coverage. Monty Coleman is like a safety man. Watch this now. He's number 51. Watch him. He's running with Hoover right down the sideline, and Hoover just runs right by him. And the ball, again, is thrown just where it had to be thrown, right out in front. And he goes all the way down. Coleman finally knocks him out of bounds on about the three-yard line. But, boy, what a big play. 57 yards on the pass play. Well, the Redskins don't get burned deep very often, but they are hurting today in that department. Well, coming into the game, the Redskins in their conference, their four total defense, one against the run, 13 against the pass. From the two-yard line. They had a play action right here again. Williams. Right at the line of scrimmage and watch the clock run down. Tackled by Charles Mann, number 71. The Eagles trying to make it close. They trail by 14. They call timeout with 54 seconds left in the half. Philadelphia has one timeout remaining. And don't forget, we're uh, looking forward to the halftime presentation by Irv Cross on his Legends of the Game series featuring Fred Bolitnikoff. And all the scores and highlights, and evidently we have some very close games being played elsewhere. From Brent Musburger. The ball is down at the three-yard line. In a similar spot, the Eagles scored on a little rollout pass. Yeah, they scored on a play-action pass, faking to the, to the tailback and hitting Oliver in the flat. 57-yard pass play gives the Eagles a chance to be within seven at halftime. And it would really give them a big boost mentally and emotionally going into the halftime if they can come away with another seven points. jaworski has been exquisite with those long throws. Well, he? he's capable. He's, he's capable of throwing that way. You just have to give him a chance to throw the ball and set his feet. He's as good as anybody in the league. And uh, he's had time to throw the ball today and put him right on the money. And I talked to him right on the field before the game. He said that... Uh, like we said last week, heck, he'd like to throw the ball 40 times a game if he could. That last pass play was 68 yards, actually. And now it's second and goal from the three. The Eagles have one timeout left. The end zone to Haddix, and he had lots of company there. Vernon Dean, Daryl Green. That's a delay play pattern, Jack, that they normally throw to the tight end. He was playing that position at that time, but he didn't. it didn't look like they waited long enough. They didn't have enough time to sell the defense on the fact that it was going to be a run, and the defensive backs responded very, very well to that play-action pass. The last time they threw it out to the right flat, they tried to cross him up and throw it across the green, but didn't succeed. Third down, third and goal. They got a bump and run over here with Carmichael. We might see him try to throw on top to Carmichael. Now well, Malak's going over there to help out. And to the touchdown to Mike Quick. Did he get off the ground? Boy, did he get off the ground. And there he is. He had a bump and run on both sides, on Carmichael, and on the other side with Quick. He elected to throw the ball to Quick, and a ball... It was thrown. The timing of the pass was just perfect. Watch Jaworski go back and do th three steps and deliver it right over the top. It has to be thrown outside. Look at that. Oh, he's up four feet in the air. Yeah, and, and the leaping ability of Quick is outstanding. He went right up over Vernon Dean on the corner, and that makes it 28 to 20. Franklin has missed a couple of extra points this year, but not this one. 28-21 with 44 seconds left in the half. Well, I didn't expect this, did you? Well, you know, I mentioned before the game, Jack, I really thought that they would play a very, very good game. I didn't realize they'd score this many points, but I felt confident that the Eagles were going to play extremely well. Now, we've still got another half to go, and you don't know what's going to happen, but so far, I think that they have to be commended on how well they're playing after the bad game they had last week 
against the New York Giants. The first time they played, Washington won it by 10, 23 to 13, and the Eagles said, we played them very well for three quarters, and then we went to sleep. Well, we get that, and they gave it away. So they gave it away, and in this game, they've given away four turnovers, and uh, it's amazing they're this close after turning the ball over four times. You saw the coach, Wayne Severe, talking to his special team. Tony Franklin will kick it off, and three timeouts remain for Washington. They can do a lot, especially with a quarterback like Theismann. Well, Theismann loves the challenge of moving the ball down the field. He told us that all he needed was 50 seconds, and if he had two timeouts, he could get them down there. They got 44. Buck, Jack. Thank you, Brent. Our score. 28 to 21, the Redskins lead by seven. You take away those four turnovers. Played a lot of good football, except they kind of self-imposed a lot of problems, and uh, that's really what happened to them. There was a game a few weeks ago on a Monday night. The score was 48-47, Green Bay. Do you think we have one of those again? Well, we could be. I tell you, if Jaworski has enough time to throw the ball, we could have that kind of a game this afternoon. He's got good protection. He's read the blitzes extremely well, and, of course, he's thrown some big ones to Mike Quick, and that's always a possibility if he gets one-for-one one coverage. You thought that the Eagles would play a good game today, didn't you? I really did. I went down the field before the game, and sometimes, you know, you get a feel for what's happening, but you felt they were very loose and very confident, felt they could play. Much different than the attitude they expressed a week ago when we saw them play against the Giants. Of course, they may still get blown out before it's over because they said they've had problems playing a full 60 minutes. Yeah, they played two quarters or maybe three quarters. They've never played four quarters all year long, in the opinion of the coaching staff, but I think the other thing is, and I don't want to belabor the point, and I don't want to insult the, the great fans of Philadelphia, but I think when you're four and eight, I don't care what team you are, I think you're a lot better to, to play away from home than you do at home because I think they're more relaxed. And the Eagles do play at home next week. They'll have the Rams in, and I'm sure that this game is catching the attention of the Los Angeles Rams. Live Toyota Corolla sedan, reborn for 1984, now at your local Toyota dealer. And by Wang, the office automation computer people. That's Tony Franklin. He'll kick it off to start the second half. Virgil C, S-E-A-Y, is a kick return man. He's averaged more than 29 yards per return. Mike Nelm did not play today. C from the five. at the 20 and the Eagles start off in inspired fashion with Bill Cower downfield number 57 to make the tackle the key stat is the turnovers the Redskins none Philadelphia four we haven't made the point against the Redskins they've been intercepted this year five times and they have fumbled and lost the ball yeah they fumbled nine times and only lost six boy they're you know they're something 12 games and they've only lost the ball 11 times and they were perfect in the turnover department in the first half. They start from the 20. Riggins is in there. A good block by Rick Walker and about a five-yard gain by John Riggins. You know, the other thing great about this Washington Rescue team is that they are not going to deviate from what they do best. They're very patient. They know what they're going to do. They know they can get it done, and they just keep sawing wood and keep staying after you with the plan that they felt was going to be good going into the game. Now, the Eagles move Dennis Harrison to the right defensive end. They haven't stayed away from him. They've been running at him. Walker in motion the other direction. Riggins running the other direction. His forward progress is to the 27 at the most. It'll be third and three. Jerry Robinson, number 56, tackle him, and what a good football player he is. Yeah, he really is number 56. You got him. You got to make sure you block him. Watch the pursuit. Now he gets it. He gets beyond the block of the guard. You see, and gets involved in a play. He anticipated the move very well. Took a good pursuit angle, and that's why he was able to make the play. Number 56. Jerry Robinson. On third and three, they take Riggins out, and they put Joe Washington into the lineup. <laughs> Along with Giaquinto. Let's see where they mark the forward progress. That's most important. 
It is a first down. It is by inches. But I'm going to tell you something. Ray Ellis really gave him a shot when he made that catch number 24. Boy, he made a good tackle in the open field. Charlie Brown made the catch, and he was walloped by Ellis, but it's a first down at the 30. Watch. It's a high, high possession. Look at all the room he has to look through the seams and throw the ball to Charlie Brown. Watch him. He's wide open. Watch this hit. Boy, look at the hit he gets by Ray Ellis, number 24. Redskins have kept the ball for two minutes at the outset of this third quarter. Riggins is back in there. Monk goes to the right. Walker and Didier are the tight ends. Bostick the center. Riggins. Those legs churn, don't they? Riggins. Boy, Bostick really did a great job that time again. Bernard Wilson finished off the play. Now watch, watch the center. Watch the center, Jeff Bostic. Watch him. Look, he goes straight ahead for the guy to get, and then he falls off of that block and gets a linebacker. You see, that's the that's what you, the great thing that they do as linemen. They surge on one guy and then slip off and block another one. Riggins a first down. Riggins came out to the 41. Riggins had gained 39 yards rushing in the first half, but they're putting him to work here, aren't they? They really do, and of course, he, he does that every week. Ray Ellis, the tackler, along with Jerry Robinson again. Looks like the Redskins are intent upon grinding it out. They've kept the ball for three and a half minutes. Well, as many big plays as the uh, Eagles have had in the first half, they definitely surely want to keep the ball away from them as much as can as they can to keep that offense on the sideline sitting on the bench. If they win today, the Redskins are in the playoffs. Riggins a fake. The pass play by Theisman. Caught by Charlie Brown. And he's tackled by Jerry Robinson out near the 47-yard line. That was good for about six. counter fake that time and there's a rollout again look at all the room he has and spots the receiver inside Charlie Brown he tries to get around the outside of Jerry Robinson number 56 but he puts him in the vice puts a squeeze on him and knocks him down they have kept the ball for four and a half minutes it's second and we'll call it five it's actually about five and a half at the 46 of Washington Monk in motion Riggins stretches out to about the 48 it'll be third and three again that means Joe Washington comes in Greg Brown made that tackle now the Redskins will have kept the ball for more than five minutes when they snap it again and Mr. Riggins comes off the field ten minutes left in the third quarter Giaquinto, Joe Washington, Alvin Garrett all check in for the offense third and three to throw the ball to Giaquino in this situation if they throw it. He's number 30. He's on a wing. In the pass pattern. There he is. There he is. And he has it. It's a first down at the 40. Now they say incomplete. The one official came in and overruled the other. And that's all these officials care about is to get it right. Incomplete kicking time for Washington. Here's Giaquino again. This is who they like. He makes a good move. Randy Logan is covering him on the inside, and then, of course, Herman Edwards makes a tackle from the outside, and he drops the football. And a correct call by the official. And I should add that I don't think Giacquino was able to practice all week long. He had a bad knee. But game time, they pumped the ball up, and he puts the hat on, and he's ready to play. This will be the fourth punt for Jeff Hayes. John Shara is back to get it at his 15. Washington kept the ball for almost five and a half minutes, but they have to kick it here. It's high, and Shira won't be able to do much with it. Fair catch at the 10-yard line. The Eagles trail by seven. They'll get the ball for the first time in the second half. The coach of the Eagles, he's trailing by seven. Jaworski starts at his 10. 
He has Haddix and Hubie Oliver in the backfield. Vito Cab, the tight end on the right side. Oliver is good for about four. Prior to today, 1,000-yard rushers in the league were Dickerson, Peyton, Andrews, Dorsett, and now Riggins has 1,009. Dickerson has the most. Darrell Grant made that tackle, second and six. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. Eagles trail by seven. Using two tight ends. And that is close to a first down. They have Lawrence Sampleton out of Texas in the Eagle lineup now, and they're using the two tight end offense. And there's John Riggins. He has gained over 1,000 yards this year, 1,009. The Eagles look like they're intent on punching it out now. Well, I think they're going to do that until they get out of the suit, so to speak, Jack. And then I think they'll open up. We might see them, you know, once they establish that run, to make sure and keep them honest, then they'll throw play action some more. From the 21. Haddock's carries. He came flying out of there, didn't he? Came out to the 26-yard line. Haddock's is a rookie out of Mississippi State early on. They thought they're going to get an awful lot of yards from him this year. Well, I think in talking to um, Marion Campbell the last week, we asked about that, and he said, well, the problem really was that Haddock's fumbled a couple of times early and lost a lot of confidence in his own ability and didn't play as well as he was capable of playing. They finally sold him on the idea, don't worry about it, just run. And that's what he's doing. He fumbled here today, but he's come back from that adversity real well. Second down and six for the Eagles. Stout defensive play by Daryl Grant. Grant, number 77, weighs 275. And we see that Charles Mann, the rookie, number 71, is getting a lot of playing time for the Redskins. And, of course, Dave Butts shouldn't make the Pro Bowl this year, shouldn't he? Well, if he doesn't make it, we ought to have an investigation because he's played well enough in other years to make it, and he's surely having a great year this year and should be on that all pro team. The crowd comes alive on third and three. Quick is to the right along with Hoover. Incomplete. They went through the hands of the tight end, Vito Cab. He could have caught that one. Yep. Monty Coleman covering, and the Eagles will punt. We repeat that Mike Nelms, as we look at Runniger, boy, he should be hot. He punted 11 times last week against the Giants. This will be his second kick of the day. He ought to be hot, or else he ought to be very, very tired. Virgil C. is back at his 30, awaiting the kick. And I asked Virgil C., I said, is it Say or C? He said that when I first came up, everybody called me Say. But I was afraid to correct him until I did something good. And when I did, I changed it to C. From the 22. Down at the 30. Boy, there was a good punt by Runniger. A very good punt by Max Runniger and the tackle by Rich Cranach. He's been downfield all day for the Eagles. Redskins are at their 30. 15-yard pass play to Art Monk. Each team scored 21 points in the second quarter. Two touchdown passes to Quick. Two runs for touchdowns by Riggins. From the 30, pass play and a screen. And it's good across the 40-yard line to Art Monk. Well, see, Jack, the great thing about, about that kind of a play, it's a very, very high percentage kind of a play. It's a quick screen. They fake inside. It's a first down. Yeah, first down. Just they run so much on first down. They've got a blocker out in front to help Monk on his outside play. It's a very high, low-risk play, and uh, they succeed in making a first down, uh, nine yards on the play. Rick first Walker, down. the tight end, with Don Warren out, has been doing the bulk of the blocking out of the tight end spot. Boy, he's a good one. Theismann, 15 out of 23. Ray Ellis 
Davis intercepted. And the Eagles have the ball at the Washington 38. That's only the sixth pass picked off against Theismann. Ray Ellis got it. And that is his first of the year. And you talk about good anticipation on the part of this young defensive back, Ray Ellis. Watch what he does here. Number 24. On the right side of your picture. Oh, you missed it with the pull. But he really has great anticipation and comes up with the interception. At the Washington 38. He took the job away from Randy Logan at the safety spot. This would be a good time for play action on first and 10, Jack. Let's see what they do. From the 38 of Washington. With Ruby Oliver in the backfield. Swing it out to Oliver. Tackle was missed by Vernon Dean. And a big game for Philadelphia. But they gotta they gotta throw the ball to win the game, Jack. And, uh, and that's a good I'd like to see him do it on first and ten, even though. It wasn't a play action, it was a pass, and that's what they have to do. It goes right back in the pocket. He has an option to throw the ball downfield to 82 quick or to the back in the flat, depending on what the linebacker does. That time the linebacker backed off to double on quick, and they threw the ball in the flat to UB Allen. Good for five yards to the 33. Haddocks. Well, they responded well that time as Washington stopped the play. At the 34, Curtis Jordan came up from the safety spot. Liebenstein held fourth, and Jordan helped to make the tackle. It's third down and, and four. Montgomery comes into the game now, number 31. He's in the game, Jack, but he doesn't look like he's running 100%. He's still limping a little bit. Looks like he's favoring his knee. 4.50 left in the third quarter. It's been a scoreless period. Blitz is on, and the pass is incomplete. Mike Quick couldn't get turned around quickly enough. Darrell Green came blitzing off the corner. Yeah. Watch him a lot. Number 57 is blitzing. Green is blitzing on the other side. He had to get rid of the ball quickly. It was in a sight adjustment pattern, Jack, where both the receiver and the quarterback have to read what the defense is going to do, and then automatically they refer to that pattern. He didn't have time to throw the ball. Tony Franklin's longest field goal, and he's 13 out of 19, is 47 yards. This will be a 52-yard shot. Oh, it could be a fake. Barefoot and all, he kicks it, and it is good. That's the first points of the third quarter. And folks, we have a 28-24 score. The Redskins lead with 4.27 left in the third quarter. 52 yards by Tony Franklin out of Texas A&M. Well, how much did it get over by? Oh, it hit the crossbar. I tell you, you have to be accurate. <laughs> you know, you have to really be accurate to hit that crossbar and make it go over like that. That's tough to do, Jack. Looked like Minnesota Fat shot that one. <laughs> We're in the third quarter, 427 left, 28-24, Washington. They've never been behind. Tony Franklin will kick it off, and Virgil C. is back. Redskins miss Mike Nelms today. You can bet on that. C. from the seven. Whoa, what a big hit. What a big hit that one. A strong tackle by Major Everett, who's not getting much of a chance to play out of the backfield, and Byron Darby. Boy, he, Darby, number 94, he really sucked it. And C is down at the Washington 26. The Redskins were intercepted their last time. The Raiders later this afternoon entertaining the Giants, trying to maintain one of the best records in football. Giants at the Raiders on CBS. And you see that Green Bay is very much in the running. They'll be playing at Atlanta. And you folks will either see one or the other of those games. Riggins in the backfield. Philadelphia shifted just before the snap of the ball. Did they guess right or not? 
Yeah, they got over there in pretty good shape. They kind of anticipated the strength of the formation and came over and uh, re responded very well to the play to their right. You know, Clint Didier is playing that tight end position for the injured Don Warren, and boy, he's a great athlete. Runs a 40 in about 4 5 four, six. The number 12 draft choice in 1981 from Portland State. They call him the frog because he's such a good jumper. He and Neil Lomax of the Cardinals were teammates out there. Second down and six. Across the 30 to the 32. It'll be third down and about three with Riggins. Just, who just broke Larry Brown's club record for carries in a season. 286. There's Didier blocking back down on number 98, Brown. And he does a good job of getting outside position. Him. Position pushes him to the inside. And the left guard, Russ Grimm and Joe Jacoby, were pulling on the play. One thing about Jacoby, you know, he's so big and so strong. Very tough for him to block in space when he gets outside and hits somebody in the open field with a hard time bending and getting low enough. Joe Washington trying for the first down. Looks like he's short about a half a yard. The tackle by Tom Struthers, a rookie, number 93, just activated off of the injured reserve list by the Eagles. Jerry Seaman, the referee, says, get back and let's have a look. That was a third down carry, and they're going to measure, stop the clock with 2.32 left in the third quarter. And the ball is in the at the 36 yard line. As they measure, we see New Orleans is ahead by four in the fourth quarter over the Vikings. That'll make Detroit and uh, Green Bay happy. Tampa Bay leads Houston 26 to 13. And the Jets by 13 over New England in the third quarter. Cleveland by 14 in the third quarter. That's a first down. You can tell by the crowd reaction. I thought he was short, but it is a first down with 2.32 left. Joe Washington carry. You know, we talk about those offensive linemen. Russ Grimm, for example, 6'3", 275, the left guard. Number three, draft choice in 81. He won nine letters in high school. Sophomore in high school in Pennsylvania. We'll talk about that a little more. Riggins came out for four yards. He's in no hurry when he runs the ball, is he? No, he, he uses his, his vision so well. He's got great eyes. And uh, very rarely will he make the wrong move as far as the cut off of the block of the offensive guard, tackler, tight end. Going back to Russ Grimm, he won nine letters in high school and scored 41 points in one basketball game, plus the fact that he's a National Honor Society guy and uh, was a punter, a linebacker, and a quarterback when he was in high school. Riggins just got three and a half. It's second down. We'll call it six. There's a correction. Tampa Bay leads Houston by 16. Here's a reverse to Monk. Reggie Wilkes, the linebacker, number 51, spoiled the reverse. Third and long coming up. He did exactly what you're supposed to do. He was the cop. He was the cop away from the play, got penetration, and there he was when the ball came back to him. He didn't chase it. He waited for it. Wait for it to come to you. Here you see Riggins giving it to Monk. Monk takes it back, but uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here you see number 51. Reggie Wilkes right there to make the play. And, of course, the other guy, Ken Clark, played it very well, too. Third and 19 at the Washington 27. No first down, and the Redskins will have to punt. With 41 seconds left in the third quarter, and they have only a four-point lead. Dennis Harrison ran him out of bounds. I tell you, you know, Joe Gibbs was justified yesterday in talking to him. He's very concerned about playing the Eagles, and I think as a coach, you always worry about a team who played very, very poorly the week before because you know they're much, much better, and if you're not, if you're not careful, you think your team's going to think it's going to be an easy game, and all of a sudden you wind up fighting for your life, and that's what's happening here this afternoon. Here comes another punt by Jeff Hayes. He'll touch it off at his 25. John Shira is inside the 30. I'd rather, much rather play a team that had a great week the week before rather than a bad one. High punt, well covered. Shira takes it, fumbles it. Philadelphia has. 
has it. Philadelphia has it. They were lucky that time. Shira got it back. Monty Coleman was downfield covering it and almost got it. And Shira usually is a very sure hand. You know what happened that time, Jack? He tried to catch it too low. That kind of a ball has to be caught right about the numbers. He caught it down by his waist, and it went right through there like a two-point play. And Coleman dived over the ball, and Shira was able to get it back at the Eagle 20. 11-2. They're undefeated in the division, 6-0. They're undefeated in the conference, 9-0. If Washington loses here, even if they beat Dallas, they will not have the home field. And that's what they're playing for here today. From the 20. Hubie Oliver stayed uh, out to the 28-yard line. He kept his knee off the ground. Vernon, D tripped, Vernon Dean tripped him up. That will be probably the final play of the third quarter. You know, Jack, and that kind of a play should be very successful when they're playing their double zone, talking about Redskins. They double the outside receiver, and justifiably so. They're very concerned about Mike Quick. The Redskins were shut out in the third quarter. That's the end of the third period with a score. 28-24 Redskins. We now pause for a word from your local station. Is that tell the world you're not just along for the ride. Pontiac, we build excitement. And by Miller Highlight. Welcome to Miller Time. We start the final quarter, and along the sideline, the Redskins are wondering if they can hold these Eagles. Second down and two from the 28. Oliver. Nothing. Ran into Daryl Grant and Dexter Manley. They ran into all the folks that time, Jack, and they had a blitz up the middle coming. It's like fighting City Hall. No way in the world they could make that play go. A lot of folks don't understand that blitz is effective on a running play as well as a pass play. It certainly is. Because it rouses up your blocking assignments and you get guys in the gap and you get penetration. Unless you call the right play, something where everybody's blocking down and you go outside or off tackle, it's tough to do. Third down for the Eagles, third and two. Throw it here, Jack. Mm. Let's see what the forward progress is. I think they kind of crossed the Redskins up. Neil Okowitz dived in there from the inside linebacker spot. Ken Coffey came up in a hurry, and this is critical for the Eagles. Did they get a first down? And even if they didn't, Hank, would they gamble? No, they can't gamble with 14.07 left. Sure can't. Not with a score like this. They can't take a chance to cough the ball up and give, give them field position. They don't have to worry about it. It's elementary. They made it. A first down rush. We have 14 minutes left. Cleveland is ahead. If they beat Baltimore, the Browns will be only one game behind the Steelers, and the Jets are walloping New England by 20 points in the fourth quarter. First down at the 30. the 35 out to the 37 or 38 yard line on the pass to Michael Haddix the rookie out of Mississippi State Malat and Okowitz tackled it well they're very concerned that Washington is very concerned about Mike Quick they're doubling him almost every play which means that something else should be open and especially something open in the middle a pick up of eight on the pass play to Haddix first round draft pick He's having a good day today, along with Hubie Oliver. It's Haddix back there now. Screen to Carmichael. A flag is down, back upfield. The tackle at the Washington 31. Jaworski is going crazy. Looks like they're calling it on Mitchell, 74. Jaworski has flipped his wig. Darrell Green was knocked.
knocked down by Mitchell, evidently. Darn it, said the coach, Aaron Campbell. That's exactly literally what he said, Jack. You know that. Watch 74 out in front. Mitchell. And evidently what he did, he hooked him. He hooked his arm. He's holding. 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 Offense. During the run, grabbed a hold of the arm. Yep, very obvious. It's a good picture. Holding. So instead of being at the Washington 31, the Eagles are back at their 36. Boy, they executed that play real well, too, Jack. It's second down and four. They're still in good shape on this drive as they trail by four points. He didn't have time and he bounced it out to Oliver. 12.41 left in the game. Third and six coming up. Third and four. Charles Mann was after him. Liebenstein was after him. Third and four. I think Dick Wood has done a good job of calling plays this afternoon, keeping them off balance, changing the pass and the run. I think they have to throw a little bit more in first and ten, or Jack. There's no team that epitomizes the situation substitution any more than the Redskins. Third down. Well, they're coming. down at the Washington 40 on the pass to Melvin Hoover and that one looked like a desperation throw by Jaworski but he knew exactly what he had to do he anticipated the blitz he knew he had one on one on Hoover uh, Hoover with number 32 Vernon Dean and they've really gone after Dean watch him he, they, the blitz is coming up the middle they keep him out of there in good shape throws the ball on the outside on the corner Vernon Dean gets turned around, and he makes the catch. Big first down play coming up. Big first down for the Philadelphia Eagles. At the Redskins 40 with 1, 2, 3, 4 left in the game. they got to pump it up here, too. Some, something here in that passing family, Jack. Maybe a quick screen or another pass. Oliver in motion. A toss to Haddix. Knocked down. Good penetration by the safety man, Curtis Jordan tripped him up I think in this kind of a game Jack it's just an opinion and that's why I'm sitting on the, up here to box and not in the sideline but I think sometimes you have to play a game with the idea that you're going to throw first and then run second and uh, I think this is this kind of a game for the Eagles I think they have to make they have to throw the ball well enough where they have to be so worried about the pass and then they can go to the running game uh, Michael Wright Mike Quick to the left Second and nine. Is that caught? It's caught. Yes, it is. It's a first down at the 23 on a diving catch by Big Harold Carmichael with Daryl Green covering. What a mismatch that is. And as tall as he is, that's, it's very tough for him to make that kind of a play, to bend that low and make that kind of a play and a catch, but he does. Boy, he sucked it right up that time. A beautiful play by Harold Carmine. And if you're going to throw that kind of a pass in the middle, Jack, you're better off to throw it short or low than high because you throw it high and he doesn't catch it. There's a tipping throw and the other guy intercepts it. You can't intercept a low ball like that. First down at the Redskin 23. Oliver barely got back to the line of scrimmage. gain on that one. Prior to that, the offensive line of the Eagles has been firing up very well. Yeah, but but again, that's like throwing a marshmallow at a freight train, Jack, trying to stop it. They're already coming off the ball good, and they stopped the run so well. I think we have to sell them on the idea that you're going to run the ball and do a little bit more play action. Ten and a half left in the game. Ball at the 24, second and 11. Olkowitz and Malak stopped that last play. They got one-on-one on, one on Dean over here again. 
Hoover and Quicker to the left, Carmichael, or Montgomery to the right. He avoided the blitz and incomplete to Melvin Hoover. Boy, I tell you, Jaworski did a great job of getting rid of that football that time. He had a lot of pressure on him. They had the blitz. Monty Coleman, number 51, was blitzing on the play. And they got the middle linebacker also come in. There's, there's Coleman, 51, getting a piece. And then Dexter Manley also got a shot, but he got rid of the ball beautifully. It's amazing he got rid of that ball that time. Jaworski calling the play in the huddle. The ball at the 24 of the Redskins. Third and 11. This crowd going wacky. Waiting for their defense. The Redskins lead by only four. Five defensive backs. Here comes the blitz. Mike Quick caught it. Not enough for a first down. It's fourth down. Darrell Green made the tackle on Quick. The two, the receiver and the quarterback, read the blitz very well. And now Franklin will try to put the Eagles within one point. That's, again, that's a term that they use, a sight adjustment, meaning that the receiver and the quarterback read the move of the defensive back, and if he blitzes, the adjustment has to be made by the receiver. The quarterback has to read it and get the ball to him right on the money, which he did to Mike Quick, number 82. This will be... A 35-yard try. Franklin gave us the only points that we had in the third quarter of this game. That's no good. A 35-yard miss. With 9.21 left in the game. The ball will be put down at the 20 yard line. So the Redskins hang on by four and they get the ball. 9 21 left in the game. The part of the Redskins from their own 20 yard line. They have Joe Washington in the backfield. I think they have to throw a little bit more, Jack. I think the defense is very inspired. Looks like they are. Joe W only got one that time. Tackled by Jerry Robinson, number 56. There's Joe Gibbs. They're lucky to be leading by four as Franklin missed the 35-yard field goal. This kind of a game, he was 43 going on 60. He just had a birthday the other day, and he's getting older quickly. Heisman, one picked off. Only the sixth of the year against him. Walker and Didier, the two tight ends. They like to screen here, but they give it to Washington. He's to the 24. It'll be third and six. Eight and a half left in the game. Ken Clark, the tackler. You know who we didn't mention, to hardly mention at all, when the Redskins were on defense from Mark Murphy? They just stand away from him, I guess. Huh? Well, yeah, they throw the ball there. The guy that they've really worked on all afternoon is Vernon D, number 32, and I think they do it, Jack, because I think he has a tendency to look into the backfield uh, when he's playing man-for-man -man coverage, and I think sometimes you get licked. If that happens, you get licked in that kind of a situation, and they've taken advantage of him here today. With Gia Quinto in the lineup, Theismann most likely will throw on third and six. Four-man rush. He can run. He'll get the first down. Theismann ran to the 35 for a first down. Well, that's the great thing about a quarterback like Theismann. He adds a dimension that you can't defense. Everybody is defense except the quarterback. Look at all the rat. Look at all the grass he's got. He takes off very decisively and runs. He knows exactly how much he has to get for the first down. And now they can go back to their scheme again to ram the ball at you and try to consume as much time as they possibly can. That's what they like to do, and that was a big play. Jerry Robinson was the first there on the tackle. It's still Joe Washington in the backfield. Tackled it. 
you know, Joe Washington, for a little guy, is typical of a great runner in that he gets better and better and better as he runs the football, and that's typical of Riggins. Riggins normally really gets hot in the fourth quarter. 6.51 left. They stop the clock as Mark May, the right guard of the Redskins, is injured, being tended to. 6.51 left in the game. Second and one, Washington. Pittsburgh was helped off the field with an apparent leg injury. The ball is at the Redskin 44. Ken Huff, a nine-year veteran out of North Carolina, number 61, is in there. And there's Mark May along the bench. Second down and one. Riggins is in. Well, that's something in it. They bring Riggins in. Second and one. They say we're going to run it. Here he comes. And they can't stop. Got three yards. There's a great illustration of how important it is to have a great, great offensive line. That's the way you build outstanding football teams. You build them with an offensive line, a defense. Look at look at the middle. Look at the way they all come off the ball in unison. They double team and then they scrape off, scrape off the guy who is coming from the inside with a guard or a tackle. And they do that extremely well. And of course, Riggins, all he needs is a crack. And he gets through there like gangbusters. First down at the 48. Big John again. Five yards. Dennis Harrison stopped it. Redskins lead by four, 28-24, with five and a half left in the game and the clock running. The defense has to come up with a big play here. They have to get the ball somehow, some way. They got to scrape it loose and create some kind of a mistake, which is very, very hard to do against this Washington team. Second and five. There's a flag, and Washington was in motion. A procedure call, I think, will be coming up. Yeah, it looks like the right side was moving, Jack. False start prior to the snap, number 74, offense. Call against George Stark, the right tackle. That'll make it second and ten. And they will accept the penalty. 5.02 left. False start prior to the snap, number 74, offense. I talked before the game about what a what a selling job you have to do on your squad to come back after a bad win, like a bad game like they played last week. You have to give Marion Campbell and his coaching staff and players a lot of credit to bounce back like they did after a disastrous week last week against the New York Giants. They had only four first downs last week, and the Giants kicked them around. Joe Washington is in. Monk in motion. Second and ten. To the Eagle 49. Third and eight coming up. I think also the Eagles learned something about their team today. I think they... They realize that they just can't come off the bus and expect to run the ball and ram it down people's throat without Montgomery at the tailback position. I think they have to throw the ball first and uh, run secondly, and I think they learned uh, a lot about what they could do from a passing standpoint here this afternoon. We have exactly four and one-half minutes left in the game. Clock running. Third down, third and seven. Alvin Garrett is the third wide receiver for the Redskins. Charlie Brown, the intended receiver, and Albert Fowles, the rookie out of Alcorn State, number 29, covered him and covered him well. He did a great, great job that time. Albert Fowles, number 29, he really did. He was right there with him step for step. And he's a cousin of Robert McNubber, of Montgomery, a free agent in 1983. Jeff Hayes doing the kicking with 4.15 left in the game. His sixth kick of the day, that's indicative of what the Eagles have done to their offense. And Shira is back to get it. He's had a tough day fielding these kicks. Oh, Danny Puck, fair catch. Ten-yard line, Shira. Well, the Eagles need a touchdown with 4.07 left. Had they got the field goal a while ago, it would have been different. Earned this effort over their defense. 
And the Eagles have 90 yards to go. 407 left. They'll wind up double covering the outside people here, Jack, and uh, Oliver would be open in the in the middle area somewhere if he decided to throw the football. Let's see what they do here. had nothing on that. Well, that was deflected, Jack. It went over end, end over end. It was touched that time by a defensive player. Who it was, I don't know. Probably Butts. I thought it was Butts. Big Dave, he is 6'7", 295. Watch him. Look at him get, look at him push. Look at him push that right guard right into the backfield that time. Really got a good shove on the offensive guard. Quick is to the left. Carmichael to the right. First down. A flag is down. And it's probably holding against the Eagles. Yep. Hubie Oliver was blocking for Jaworski. And now Hubie Oliver caught the ball, and whoever was blocking for Jaworski was called on the hole. Well, I'm sure they'll decline a penalty, Jack. It would only be five yards. Now they're going to take it. They take it. I would decline it. Holding number 74, offense. Well, they couldn't decline the penalty, Hank. It would have been a first down play. Half a dozen for Washington, three for Philadelphia. Two of them really hurt. Two holding penalties. And this is second and 15. Have to watch the safety now. The worst you have to be careful. Get rid of it. Oh! Had it struck him. He really drilled the ball at him, but he dropped it. Redskins hanging on, leading by four with 3.50 left in the game. He's got a good lane to throw the ball. Look at that. Good lane. The ball's right on the numbers. Perfect. Just dropped it. He had the defensive players going the other way. He might have done some running with that. Oh, yeah. He had, he had a good opportunity to make some yardage on that play. Well, this may be the play of the game for the Eagles. Jack, if they're going to do anything. Oh, it's complete for a first down out to the 28. Hoover caught it, was hit. Not cuckoo by coffee, but the Eagles keep the ball. It was amazing, Jack. They had double coverage that time on quick. The defense on Hoover, on Hoover, they had double coverage on him. And in spite of that, look at that. They didn't touch him coming off the line of scrimmage. And that's why he was able to break to the outside. And Vernon Dean again was in a good position. He's the guy they worked on along with the strong safety. One of the defenders slipped down on the play. And the ball's at the 28. Watch Jaworski get hit after he throws the ball. Boy, what a shot. Eagles trail by four. So they need a touchdown, not a field goal. Had they gotten the field goal a while back, the Redskins would be even more trouble. Incomplete off the hands of Carmichael, underthrown just a bit. 37 left, covering Curtis Jordan. They had a four-man rush that time. They faked a blitz. He had time to throw the ball and try to hit Carmichael down the seam, but underthrew it. And for that reason, no play on the ball. Each team has three outs, three timeouts remaining. Second down and ten from the Eagle 28. Montgomery comes left. Quick is 
to the right. About four yards on the play, that's all. Hubie Oliver caught it, stopped the clock by going out of bounds with 3.28 left. Let's see what's going on elsewhere. Should be getting late for some of those other games. New Orleans by one over Minnesota in the fourth quarter. Tampa Bay leads by nine in the fourth quarter over Houston. The Jets in good shape in the fourth quarter. And Cleveland ahead by 15 in the fourth quarter over Baltimore. There's our time left, 3.28. Blitz. First down. Now incomplete. Montgomery couldn't hang on. Anthony Washington made him drop the ball along with Mark Murphy. There again, he read the blitz perfectly, delivered it right where it had to be thrown, and the ball was jarred loose on Montgomery. And now they're in a kicking situation. Fourth and six with 324 left in this game. When well, Anthony Washington hit him, that's when Montgomery dropped the ball. So you saw Runniger getting ready to kick to Burgess C. Beautiful kick. C took it and went out of bounds at the Washington 27. So the Redskins, with a four-point lead, have three minutes and 16 seconds to kill off on the clock. And only one turnover today, that on an interception, and they can't afford any now. With Mark May out of the game, Jack, I think they'll run left over Jacoby and also Brim. There, there they go. go. Riggins. And the Eagles stacked it up after a couple of yards. And now the Eagles have to be very wise in the use of the three timeouts they have left. In fact, they could have used one there, Hank. Yeah, they can't wait too long to call a timeout, Jack. They have to stop them and get the ball back and then operate from there. Yeah, they've let, they've let it go down 10 seconds right now. And by the time they snap the ball... Yeah, they got, and they're going to wait until it goes all the way down to about five seconds. At least they should. Beisman should wait until about five seconds before he snaps the ball. The Eagles let 25 seconds get away from him. There he did. Five seconds. And they better call one here. The ball's at the 31-yard line. 225 left. They're going to need a touchdown if and when they get it back. I'll be darned. They haven't used any, Hank, and it's third down and long. Well, they've lost a lot of time. Yeah, they have. They've let the Redskins run two plays and knock almost a minute off the clock. In fact, it'll be more than a minute. Now, they stop the clock with 2.04 left. Third down coming up. They'll get another timeout at the two-minute mark. And they'll still have two timeouts remaining. Tonight on CBS, you can see the award-winning news magazine show 60 Minutes, followed by a two-hour special, Memorial Day, and Trapper John, M.D. That's all tonight on CBS after the doubleheader football is concluded. And our doubleheader games today are a choice of two. You'll see either the Giants playing at the Raiders where a victory is very important to Los Angeles or Green Bay still in the race in the NFC Central against Atlanta and they're still alive in the NFC West and that will be immediately following our game today there's John Riggins he's out on this third and long situation third and seven 204 remaining in the game Philadelphia has never been ahead Trail by 14 at one time. And they have blanked. They have blanked the Redskins in this entire second half. Yes, again, you have to give them a lot of credit for playing the kind of game they played with here this afternoon. Third down and six from the 31. Joe 
motion and in the lineup. Gio Quinto in there. Gio Quinto in motion. Charlie Brown to the 46-yard line. Albert Fowles and Bernard Wilson tackled it. Fowles had a man for man, number 29. A tough assignment. If he had time to throw the ball, then he did. Watch Seisman. Boy, he's got a lot of poise. You talk about a big play guy. He steps in the pocket, hits him right across the middle. You see Fowles chasing him in hot pursuit. Brown has great speed, and he picks up a terrific first down. A very, very big play for the Washington Redskins. To the Eagle 45. We have 157 left in the game. The Redskins lead by four. And they down for two to assure themselves the win. It's first down at the Philadelphia 45. Riggins. Seven yards. Seven yards. That's what's so great about this team in the fourth quarter. Riggins gets better and better as the game goes along. And of course, this game, he hadn't played that much, so he's fresh as a daisy. He's as fresh as he is in the first quarter right now. And they're just going to worry about killing the clock, moving the chains. Look at the takeoff on the left side of the offensive line. Look at Jacoby. Grim. Say so they just keep, stay with their blocks. And Riggins just keep, keeps his balance and plowing through there. First down. And as I mentioned earlier, you know they're going to run over Jacoby and Grimm because May is out. So they'll just keep running that left side and just keep moving to change. Bernard Wilson made the tackle last week. Charlie Brown caught eight against the Rams. And today he's caught seven. And once more, the Redskins go over the 400-yard mark in total offense. Seventh time they've done that. This timeout is charged to the Eagles, and they have one left. One more first down, and the Redskins will win the game if they hang on to the football. We have three finals for you. The Bears beat the 49ers 13-3. Tampa Bay wins their second game over Houston by nine. And the Jets win again 26-3 over New England. One more first down is what Washington requires, plus retention of the football in order to win it. Hank, how do you think the Eagles will play next week against the Rams? It's hard to tell. You know, it's been such a stock market season for so many teams, but I really think they ought to, they have to feel good about the way they came back from last week and the way they play today. I think they'll play well to next week. I really do. Of course, you really have to give credit. You have to give an awful lot of credit. We talked about it earlier. For this Washington Redskin team, boy, you talk about a consistently solid, strong football team. That's exactly what they are. Riggins got forward progress of about two yards. Bernard Wilson, the first one there. Anthony Griggs. And now we're down to one minute left. When are the Eagles going to use that final timeout? Riggins looks like he may be ailing a little bit. He's had a bad back a couple of times this year. The Eagles have only one timeout left. And that clock is just murdering them. Washington leads by four. They'll have to call a timeout after the next snap of the ball. And uh, Theismann is going to watch that 30-second clock. Well, he'll wait until he gets down to five. He does, and Riggins goes down to the 29-yard line. 24 seconds left. The Eagles use their last timeout. And this game is over. All they have to do is run the ball, hang on to it. It's third down coming up. And Washington will have won by the score of 28 to 24. The executive producer of CBS Sports, Terry O'Neill. Produced today by Charles H. Milton III. And our director, Mary Cavallina. Associate director, Ernie Bauer. And others involved in the telecast from RFK Stadium. And don't forget, there's another game coming up on CBS as the Redskins shake hands. They've won again. They've caught Dallas once more in the standings. Each team
the Raiders who have to win being visited by the Giants or the Packers visiting Atlanta where it rained this morning in the second game of our doubleheader today on CBS. One more snap of the ball and it will be all over. And more and more the Redskins are headed for that matchup at Dallas. Meanwhile they have to play Atlanta here next Sunday and that'll be no picnic for them. They really won't be because they're a lot better football team than their record indicates too. Particularly if Atlanta wins today. So watch for the result of that one on the second game coming up. Tough to beat these Redskins here at home and then nail down another. They have their hands full. The Eagles played well. 28-24 the final. And the Redskins have won another. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this word from your local station.